let's take a little bit of a turn here because I, I think one of the other things that you you teach on that I I, I really like this idea of, of how we uh, discern uh, the, the the wise message that's coming in and how we know how we navigate when we're getting bits and pieces of information from here and we're getting it from here and we live in a, uh, an age of information overload it seems like and then yet in our busy lives when it comes to how we relate to one another uh, especially in the workplace we get we may get a message from one person here but then we get a message from another person over here and those don't always gel and so how do we how do we navigate and discern all the messages that's kind of seem to be coming our way. What do you think about that? That's a great question. I'm going to pick up the rubber bands again, right? Because okay. there's tension in that. Mm -hmm. You get all these messages. Which one's the right one? And, and maybe instead of a rubber band, it's like an octagon. You know, you're getting pulled in eight different directions. And what I'm seeing in a lot of leaders is because you're running so fast and you have so much coming at you so quickly, things can get a little blurry on the edges. You know, if you're driving your car really fast, the scenery is a little blurry than if mm -hmm. you're kind of going a little slower. And sometimes with that, something's maybe going wrong. And someone says, well, I can't do that because so-and-so did said so-and-so. And you're like, well, great. Well, I, and then you go running down that path as fast as you can to fix it, but you haven't even double checked it yet to see if that's actually yeah. even the case. Mm -hmm. And then you hear another message. You're like, well, okay, well, that's confusing. And then you do double check. Well, then there's a third message and a third. And so you want to be mindful that I had a leader tell me this in one of our groups, and I wish I had quoted, gotten the right quote, but there was some <laughs> general in one of the wars that said, I have learned that the first messenger isn't always the most accurate. But it, and they're in war. I mean, people are dying. Yeah. I mean, they have to move quickly. They have to be strategic in what they're doing. And he said, I just learned I could not let the first message be the only message I'm listening to. And when I was sharing this with the at the training um, a few weeks ago, I actually showed a clip. And I don't know if you've seen the movie Inside Out uh -huh. um, by Disney. Uh -huh. And it's actually dealing a lot with emotion, but it gave a great visual. But basically, there were five different messengers telling this little girl how to behave. There was anger, there was disgust, there was fear. And all those things are showing up in you too, in your, all of our minds. We have that one part of our brain that talks about emotions. But what's really interesting is internally, there's probably six different parts of your brain that have different ways that they give you information. One of the ways that is the loudest and the quickest to get to you is this whole idea of your brain has one job and is to keep the human alive. Mm -hmm. So that is your threat response. So you have a part of your brain that's constantly searching for threats all the time, 24 seven, <laughs> they're looking for threats. And if a whiff of something dangerous, even if it's not, cause your brain doesn't always, the chemistry in your brain doesn't tell the difference between a bear chasing you that's about to eat you and the same chemistry of per someone who might be saying something that seems like it's gonna hurt you. You're not gonna perhaps die from a word, even though it may not feel good, but the chemistry is the same, which is so interesting. Mm -hmm. So this threat response is yelling at you. Warning, warning, danger, they're a threat, don't listen to them. Don't do what they say, it's different than what you wanna do. It's yelling at you, literally, internally, mm -hmm. in your head. It's trying to be as loud as it can to drown out all the other voices. And so, but then your emotional person's trying to, no, no, they're a friend, remember? You have a relationship with them, we can trust them, they're not, you can trust them. Then another voice over here from memories is like, remember last time, it went okay last time, it's actually not a threat. And then you have your critical thinking going, are you kidding me, you're a professional, why are you being afraid? Come on, we need to be creative, we gotta come up with a solution. So you have these different areas of your brain that are weighing in, but they come at different times. Okay. Now they all come quickly, but they don't yell, as, some yell louder than others. They come at different times, just like this messenger on the battlefield. He's mm -hmm. getting different messages. Internally, you're getting different messages at different times. Mm -hmm. You want to know yourself well enough to know how to slow, like you were saying, I know I need to lean back, get in a comfortable position so that I can calm the yelling down in my head of mm -hmm. get out of there, either two things or three. It's the fight, flight, or freeze, right? Yeah. So if your brain is feeling a threat, they're just gonna start armoring you up and you're gonna start being ready to defend yourself. You're not gonna even listen to what the other person's mm -hmm. saying. You're just gonna keep pushing your own agenda, pushing your own idea, protecting yourself really, mm -hmm. and your people perhaps. Yeah. Freeze means you're just gonna, you're just gonna shut down. And you, you sometimes as leaders, we do that to our people. If we're asking them hard questions, we're asking them in such a way that they feel threatened 
and they're shutting down. They can't lean in and be mm-hmm. curious. They're leaning out and wanting to run. And their brain is shutting everything down because they're scared. The fear yeah. has taken over. The other one is um, freeze, fight, flight. flight. They also want to, so this is also an example of freeze, sort of. They literally will leave, say, I can't talk about this right now. Mm-hmm. And they'll just totally check out and they won't answer your emails, they won't answer your calls. They're out. A freeze will sit there and nod their head, but they're not thinking consciously of anything. They're just telling you yeah. whatever you want to hear so they can get out of there. And no decisions are getting made. Mm-hmm. F- flight, they're out. They yeah. may quit. In fact, Simon Sinek said something interesting on a podcast just the other day. He said, so many people are so conflict averse in the way that their leaders are coming at them with questions that they would rather quit than try to have the conversation. Wow. Wow. They won't lean in and try to defend themselves or try to explain what happened. They'll just say, okay, you're right. And then the next day they leave with no notice to the leader that they're leaving. They'll just say, I'm out. They don't just don't come to work the next day. They just yeah. quit. They have no, they have no plan. They have no, they just, they'd rather quit than lean in. Mm-hmm. And part of that's, I say, leaders can help your people want to lean in and have the conversation based on this idea of which messenger in your head are you listening to? So, so in the midst of that, right, I think one of the things that's interesting is thinking about how you have these voices that are coming at you and and yes i i I think we we want to lean in but how do we cultivate those types of responses the ones that are healthier where we're able to not just stop and which voice is talking to me but actually cultivate responses where we're maybe a little we we grow Mm -hmm. towards healthier responses um a more balanced way of thinking um, where we kind of see everything come together what would you there's a great word that's actually your superpower that we all have, but okay. we don't always lean into it. And it you'll see, think it's silly, but it's curiosity. Mm-hmm. If you can ask yourself, am I being curious in those moments when you're feeling yourself kind of getting worked up, frustrated, aggravated, and you start saying, wait, am I being curious? Or have I already assumed and accused them? You might be pretty accurate on what's going on, yeah. yet if you can still come to them with a very curious mind, even your neuro... Have you ever been in a place at a meeting and you can actually feel the anger off someone? Oh, yeah. And even if they're being calm, they may have a calm face. They're keeping mm-hmm. their, their voice very calm. They're even sitting in a relaxed position, but you can almost feel it on them. That's the neurochemistry. People can tell. Yeah. They can tell that you're not in curious mode. They can tell that you're in fear and judgment. Mm-hmm. The neurochemistry is this cocktail in your brain. That's what's happening in those moments. And again, the biology shows up. And so you want to ask yourself, okay, I want to try, again, to give grace. I'm going to be as generous as I can with the story in my head that I think is going on. And I'm going to get really curious. Mm-hmm. And again, it goes back to, am I asking them? And I'm really actually even asking in a way that I don't already know the answer. That's the other part, hard, hard yeah. part of asking. I haven't already assumed what the answer is going to be. Yeah. I'm actually going to, I'm asking a question I genuinely don't know the answer to. I'm telling myself, you think you know, but you don't know. And you stay curious and you let them have a chance. And if you can come into a conversation saying, hey, I'm just wondering about this. I don't really know what's going on, but I just wanted to check on you. Can you tell me more about this? Do you see how your voice is even curious here hey we need to have a conversation Mm -hmm. what's going on yeah do you see how those are two very different feelings yeah and sometimes you need to have the conversation Mm -hmm. after you've asked and you've gotten your information you've double checked maybe you've this is the second or third conversation you've had with them about this and it's still not getting any better so you have to change be a little bit more direct Mm -hmm. and so but curiosity even in meetings Often, again, back to this idea we're running so fast, you're only hearing half of the information. Because when you get into fight, flight, or freeze, have you ever heard the Charlie Brown? It starts being wah, 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 wah. <laughs> They'll hear two or three of your words, and your next words might be, we're just exploring here. Yeah. But all they heard is, we're going to, these are some things we're thinking about. They didn't hear the part, don't act on them yet. They thought, great, now I have a to-do list. And they start running down the road doing them. Yeah. Because, again, it's hard to lean in. Now, it's on two sides. Both people have to stay curious. And so even for someone, if your boss is sharing some information with you that they want you to do, stay curious. Yeah. Don't be in fear and judgment like, how in the world am I going to add this to my plate right now? I don't even know if I know how to do this. I'm going to get fired. All the internal dialogue that started. Instead of, 
okay, can you help me? I have, I would love to know the priorities of this. I have a lot that I've been assigned and I just need you to help me have the wisdom to know which comes first, which thing can be moved, pushed aside for this or what's your timeline on this. Yeah. Timeline's a big one. Always ask and be curious about timelines. And so let them help you. Instead of you leaving the meeting feeling in fear and judgment, how am I going to do it? Get curious with them. Yeah, I think it goes uh, both ways. It, it does. It really does. And the, the way as you were talking, and I'm going blank on the author. I'm I really am. I'm going blank on the author right now. But I just remember the, the comment was said someone some something like this that that curiosity is the cure for assumed conflict, and and that's that our brain is making up this story that this is not going to end well, that we are going to have a problem, whether it's a, a customer, a resident, whatever, or even like a coworker, because we've seen this before. And we're already writing the story out before we ever allow the story to play out. Uh, and so, yeah, man, I wish I could remember the name of that author. Yes, but no, yeah, it's so it, true. It's such a... Well, in another kind of quote, and I may misquote it, but it was an interesting quote. It just said, and basically the gist of the quote is, if you're feeling pressure... Mm -hmm. or stress or frustration, there's a really good chance there's a miscommunication yep. and you need to check your assumptions. Yeah. So when you feel physically frustrated, aggravated, overwhelmed, stop and say, okay, is there any miscommunication on expectations here? Mm -hmm. I probably need to, maybe I need to clarify some timing on some things or again, priorities or which comes first or maybe something changed. And leaders don't intentionally try to make employees' lives miserable. Sometimes we just leaders sometimes will just forget to loop in everybody. It yeah. just happens. It's just a thing. You don't ever maliciously want to. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to maliciously be mean to someone. Yeah. You just got distracted and had a moment, oh my word, I cannot believe I did not loop them in. Yes, we change directions. We don't actually need that anymore. And then there's, then they're, because then they're wondering, why are they giving me more? I thought this is what, I'm, actually don't do that anymore. Do this instead. <laughs> because it does, so it's just a miscommunication. There's an mm -hmm. assumption there that you knew. I just talked to a leader the other day, they're in marketing for a big company, and they said basically 10 leaders, 10 execs, set their strategic plan, and they all start working with their teams, but then all, everything all seems to filter back to marketing to help them execute it, and they get overwhelmed. And they're like, well, how did you not know? Market, they said, we, we don't always know all of y'all's yeah. plans. And they thought, oh, we thought that y'all had, and they know, we don't have a bat phone mm -hmm. that is, <laughs> gives us direct access to all these things. And so it's just interesting how in any company that's gonna happen. And so what's also interesting, you said something earlier like, this has happened before, here we go again. Here we go again. So I want to tell you a story about a Frito pie. So I was just right. with the leader three weeks ago, and she told me the story. She, okay. she works for a large organization that has food service as part of the company. They provide food service. It's in a university, actually. And so I think any college student remembers how much fun you love to make about the cafeteria food, or the food's terrible, or, oh, 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 you know, mystery meat, or whatever. And so they had actually been working on it. And this person had had the history, the reputation of not being all that great. They also did, like, things at the um, for all the – venues and events and games and all the big university sports and all the things. And so all these execs, this, basically the exec VPs are all in a meeting and they're talking about and different things. And they're like, well, has that gotten better? Like, well, have you heard? They are charging $18 for a Frito pie at games. And everybody's like, what? Eight, $18? What is he thinking? Here we go again. I thought we had turned a corner on all of that. And finally someone said, well, hey, can we double check that? Let's just double check. Yeah. Let's just yeah. double check that. Yeah. Well, it turns out it was a Frito pie for $18 with a churro, with an unlimited refilled cup that was a specialty <laughs> cup of the unit, really nice cup, yeah. with, I think, chips too. So it was like this huge meal deal, which if you go to Chick-fil-A right now and get a big meal deal, you're going to spend 15 bucks easy, if not yeah. 20 So really the price point, when they said, oh, mm -hmm. But they had worked themselves up in a frenzy. They yeah. were even about to come at this guy again over information that wasn't even right. Because, again, they were listening to the first messenger. Mm -hmm. They were allowed, they were assuming that was correct information. Yeah, so let's talk about that because you've led us right into that really important conversation of, 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 of asking versus assuming and accusing. And so when, when you talk about this stuff with leaders, I, I think you've done a great job of setting us up for not assuming, but I also think sometimes we don't always know how to ask, what questions to ask, or even how to wrestle with how to go about that. And so what do you teach leaders? What do you, I mean, just, just people in general, like what do you teach folks when it comes to really leaning into that ask and, and asking well and asking the right questions and those types of things? Right. It goes back to that curiosity idea and using words like, hey, 
I just am curious. Hey, I wonder. Mm-hmm. Hey, I actually heard this, but I wasn't sure if that's right. And maybe it is, but can you help me out with that? Mm-hmm. Trying to stay in this, giving them permission maybe to tell you the truth. Giving them permission maybe to be able to speak up for themselves without shutting down and feeling that they're being accused of something. That's the trick, and it's not easy. Because mm-hmm. think about you. If, if you're like, hey, Kathy, I have a question for you. Okay. You're like, hey, you know the other day in that meeting, I'm just curious, were you, is, was everything okay in there? Well, automatically you're going to be on alert, right? Yeah. And so it's, it is a tricky thing. So it goes back to trust. It goes back to relationship. It also goes back to how often do you interact with this person? Mm. Is this someone that you interact with regularly that if you went to them and said, hey, because you've already talked to them four times a day, so a question's not that out of the ordinary. Or is it that you never had talked to them unless there's something wrong and you haven't talked to them in probably a month and then you said, hey, I have a question for you. Yeah. They're going to armor up and know something's up. Yeah. So there's this huge. rhythm of relationship. There's a mm-hmm. rhythm to relationship. And I would say if you have a question, you're needing to verify or double check something that, like for example, this happens all the time. Somebody needs something from another department, let's say. I mean, this happens, I've, I can list, probably think of 10 companies in my head right now in the last 60 days that I've heard this happen to. Someone says, hey, hey, so-and-so department, can you give me this information? They're like, I'm so sorry, we can't give you that information. Well, why not? Well, my boss said we can't give you that information. Well, what do you mean you can't give me that information? So then they go back to their boss and say, they won't give us the information. And that boss is like, what? We got got a deadline. What's going mm-hmm. on? What do you mean they're not going to give it to you? Well, that's what they said. Yeah. And so then it goes up the chain and then it goes over and then it goes down the chain. And so this person over here that's is getting accused of something, they don't even know what's going on because it went underneath and over and around. So there's all this role clarity of who says who. Is there trust between departments that this person that said, so this person says you can't have the information. Wouldn't it have been great if they had relational capital with each other to say, hey man, can you help me understand why we can't have it? That way maybe we can go to our bosses and help them see yeah. why we need this information. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was just a misunderstanding. Turns out, as which actually it turned into this big bonfire and it tons, tons of energy, tons of distraction. When it finally got down to what actually happened, there was just a miscommunication of this person who there was some information that they literally couldn't share because it was contractually a vendor that they actually couldn't share it. But, this, but that was a teeny tiny piece of it, not even relevant. All yeah. the other information was fair game, but they misunderstood that. Yeah, there's a, there's a piece in your story too that I find really interesting. And, and this is one that I, I think you could see very easily happening amongst our companies. And, and the reason I say that is, is, is one, with today's work, you've got remote workers. And so you've got building relational capital can be difficult in today's world, especially if Zoom is the only option that you've got or an email. The other part of it is, 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 especially with Madera Residential and Rockwood, is you've got anywhere from four to 10 to 12 possibly, you know, uh, employees on, on, on one property, but we've got four to 10 to 12, whatever, you know, somewhere in between there on another property. And so building relationships across property and all those types of things. Um, and then of course we are distant, you know, with a group, with groups all over DFW, groups groups in Houston and Austin, uh, in Lubbock. And then you start looking at, like I said a minute ago, our remote workers, whether it's uh, California or Washington or Colorado or, or Massachusetts or Florida and, and, and places all over in between. and working with vendors across the world, right? And not to mention different ages, different personalities, yes. different cultures of where they live. All of those things. <laughs> yes, yes. All of those things really are coming fast. in. Right. And and I think I think it is um, illogical to assume we're going to get to build relational capital with all of those people. So there still has to be back to the values conversation, a manner in which I enter into relationships and enter into an interaction with another person. And I think that's where, that's a big piece of this because I'm not going to get to build relational capital with everybody. Right. But who I, again, the way I enter into that mm-hmm. with curiosity, uh, with which, values which at my tie, core. Right, which ties into your values. That's one thing, even though with all those complexities of the mm-hmm. geographics, the titles, that's another thing that comes in. If you've got, if you're a leader with the title of let's say VP, you're probably, I've noticed with the, with leaders at Madeira, everyone's so humble and everyone's so servant-hearted. They're willing to do whatever needs to be done to help the company. They're not arrogant about their title. And so yet, 
And so it's confusing to them, I think, sometimes maybe when someone with a title of VP, even though you're just one of the people, I'm just one of y'all. I mean, I, I'm on the team. Yeah. Yet you still have that title. And sometimes that's a thing for people. Mm-hmm. They get intimidated by that. They feel nervous around that. Yeah. They're, even though you're very relational and you're just asking a question, you've got this big title hanging above your head that you don't even think is there, but it's there mm-hmm. when they're interacting with you. So you want to just be mindful of that as well is to try to put people at ease. Thank you so much for doing this. Sure. And thank you for coming in. Uh, thank you for uh, not just working with our leaders, but, but bringing your expertise and the different things that you've learned uh, throughout your time uh, to, to the rest of our companies. Um, we'll chop this up and, and make certain it gets out to everybody and, and give them a chance to to really see that not not only are our leaders trying to learn and not only are our leaders trying to grow, but we want we really want to bring the conversation to as many people as we can. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate oh, it. It's my it. pleasure. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Madeira Companies, we'll have uh, another podcast for you soon, and we'll uh, we'll get you some more content out as quickly as we can. Uh, thank you guys so much for what you do. Uh, more importantly, thank you for who you are. So have a good day.